Just tremendous energy today on a Friday. Let's see if TJ doesn't bring us down. We have a lot to discuss. It's very exciting. The Lions as double-digit favorites for the first time since, I don't know, 1940 or whatever it is. Super pumped. We've got Urban Meyer. Was he in East Lansing or not? I don't know. It's just fun. Uh, so much to do. Is TJ ready? Is TJ joining us, or does he have more ribs to check on? He's almost here. He's taking his good old time. That's all. <laughs> I mean, my goodness. Here I know, TJ. I, I hear you. I hear you getting ready and doing whatever it is you're doing. These you NFL prepared? pre Madonnas, you know how they are, Mike. I couldn't right. hear you, Michael. I was trying to get the headset ready. I know. This is, hey, Kenny, keys to the game brought to you by FanDuel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, TJ, let's ask what the, the most pressing piece of business. Was there a non-zero chance Urban Meyer was in East Lansing this week? No. Uh, what, non-zero? Yes, there was a non-zero chance. Why um, are you reporting it? What are you hearing? I don't know anything more than you guys do. Come on, don't I'm sitting across from the best insider up there at East Lansing. Rico would know better than me. Ooh, whoa. How about that? That's a sweetheart know. compliment well, it was to like, start today. It was like when I it felt first, a little backhanded. But when okay. it first, no, it was a compliment. Okay. I, what what you say is normally true. You have okay. very uh, high-level friends over there. Thank so you. Your sources oh, right. are better than most. Uh, earlier in the week, though, whoever reported it was kind of getting hammered. Like, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. And then it kind of seems like today everybody's starting to uh, confirm that news. It, it happens every time because if you say anything good about Michigan State, well, that shouldn't happen. You know, you guys are poor. Stay over in the corner. So Is that good news? I mean. I mean, I think it is. It's saying that you're willing to shoot your shot. Yeah. I mean, I that's one way to look at it. I kind of look at it as, you know, you're moving on from one alleged why don't you scumbag just say one scumbag another, to the next? Uh, even to bigger scumbag. Eight. Yeah, but here's the thing. <laughs> using, the, using that logic. Allegedly. Using that logic, you paid the first scumbag like he was Urban Meyer. So if that's the case, don't get the generic brand. Get the real thing. Yeah, what right. are you, uh, you, you, you bought the fake Gucci the first time. <laughs> right. You may as well buy the real McCoy the second time. Right. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys are just starting to figure that out. But, uh. No, I mean, I don't, I, mean I don't know. I don't know. Good for Michigan State. I mean, yeah, you're right. You got to, uh, especially with the with the landscape of college football and uh, the new Big Ten, you know, coming in the next couple of years. I mean, you want to you want to compete with these guys. I mean, you have to bring in a big name coach. You have to bring in a guy that's going to attract recruits and kind of unify the uh, the alumni, right? The guys yeah. that are giving money in the NIL. The biggest thing you got to do is you got to be able to do that. You got to be able to attract a quarterback. And I think urban is one of those guys that can, you're not allowed to have four years. Mark D'Antonio wouldn't have survived right now. You know, you you, you have to be able to hit the ground running and do something within two years or your program becomes irrelevant, especially now in the big 18, when you have these four new brands coming in there and you, you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to become uh, the Midwest version of Rutgers. Yeah, I mean, I say give Harlan Barnett at least five years to see what he can <laughs> okay. do. <laughs> okay, John. Hey, you know, here's it's the other thing. It's a lot like what TJ and I have often talked about uh, about Chris Creighton and Eastern. How long are you going to stay with that guy? It's time to compete, TJ. What do you mean? We won a bowl game last year for the first time in 50 years, Mike. We're on the we're on yeah, the yeah, upswing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we're how many Mac upswing. titles you got, big boy? Yeah, that's, how that's, many Mac titles you got? Erroneous. Yeah, <laughs> guys, 48 and 64 as head coach, and he looks like Santa Claus. It's time to move on. It took a uh, while to get going. But, uh, we're not breaking down Eastern Michigan football. <laughs> <laughs> you t- hey, homecoming hey, tomorrow, hey, by the way. <laughs> Hey, horse is out of the barn, Rico. You told me Urban was in East Lansing. I'd do what I want. This is a big Friday. <laughs> do whatever I want. What's your favorite Walt Church memories? Two four eight. Charlie Bass. You want to talk? Lo- yeah, I, I know. I know. Let's not do this. Ron Rice. Uh, let's- <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. And hey, let's hey, get hey, back hey, on hey, the. Hey, let's get back. Right. Let's get back. Hey, we're pretty much Max Crosby. All right, we're pretty much out. <laughs> Hold on. No, you know what? Yeah, I'm done. I'm not going to I'm not going to go there. So let let's just move forward. Lions. And if you want to call about Urban, we can do it. But Lions, TJ sounds like they're going to be super banged up. We're going to do the injury report at four o'clock. Sure as hell sounds like no Amon Ra, no Brian Branch, maybe on Decker. But what what is your take on this? They're in a really weird spot as ten point favorites. 
I don't know the last time that's happened. <sighs> Where are you at as far as entering a game like this? They're not used to this. I mean, I kind of feel like it's either going to be 45 to 10 or I feel like it's going to be 24 to 21. You know, like I, It'd be I don't 45 think there's, to 10. I don't think there's any, any in between there. I mean, we know that this is the, uh, this is the NFL and anything could happen. And like you said, I mean, we'll get confirmation in about an hour. But I, I don't know if Amon Ra is going to play. I don't know if Branch is going to play. I would assume they're probably going to be listed a little bit less than questionable. See, here's what I'm um, like, TJ, I think this is a sign that this is a good team that you realize, hey, guys, we don't have to play them against the Panthers, but we'll still win. Well, it's, This is an extra week that we get to rest these guys. They don't have to do anything. We'll see you in Tampa. And, and you're right. If they're the team that we all think they are, you're right. They should be able to go out there a little shorthanded and, and take care of business. You got Absolutely. one wide receiver is not playing, but guess what? Another one just walked through the door. Well, I mean, <laughs> let's not compare <laughs> that production. <laughs> but, um, no, but I, I, I mean, I feel confident. I do. I think that 10, 10 and a half number is uh, any t- NFL game. That's just a big spread for the NFL in general. Um this is and Campbell kind of hinted that this is this is kind of the week where teams start to either separate themselves or teams start to fall off a little bit or teams start to pick it up a little bit. We obviously know Carolina uh, is winless; they haven't won a game yet. Um, I watched the tape. I mean, I don't think they're a bad team, but I'll tell you what: their offense, like it, it looks like a high school scheme. It's a lot of RPO. It's a lot of one read. It's a lot of wide receiver screen. Uh, it's a lot of just very simplified kind of yeah. preseason ish offensive football and it's I funny think that if, you said that because if you look at this Carolina offense tell me how they look better than the Atlanta Falcons or the Green Bay Packers I can't I can't and that's why I look at it and I say I don't know if I wouldn't be surprised if the Lions have a Atlanta-esque game and keep Carolina to 10 points to keep them to 13 points and we obviously know if their offense just keeps rolling I mean they're probably going to score 24 28 at minimum so I go back to that and I just look at it and I say man I can't I can't find a mismatch anywhere where we should be worried about anybody from Carolina especially on their offensive side I mean they don't have no, an the elite only person, weapon that you have to take away they don't have TJ, the an only elite running need, back you have to stop I the only mean, person you need to worry about played last night for Chicago and scored three touchdowns yeah, DJ Moore he's ain't there anymore <laughs> now defensively right. I mean they got some Ring guys Brian Burns is a guy right <laughs> Brian Burns is a dude man they can they can rush you they can get after the passer a little bit um they're Derek Brown, he's a big boy in the middle. I mean, you got some guys defensively where I think that's going to be a, a pretty good matchup. But, yeah, I just look at Carolina's offense, and it's just very blah. And, you know, last week, I mean, I know they were in the game. It was 21-13 against the Vikings. Kirk threw a pick six down at the three-yard line. That was really the only reason they were in that game. Offensively, they didn't get anything going. Um, so I look at this, and I say, yeah, if you're the team we think you are, uh, if you're a team that, you know, is is going to compete and we consider you a Super Bowl uh, contender, not a favorite, but a contender, this is a game you go out and take care of easy. But it's the NFL. It's anything can happen. I don't know. It's, no. So that's where I'm not. I, uh, well, then not when it comes boy. to a win, but when it comes to a 10-point spread in the NFL, that is, to me, like a 30-point spread in college football. So I don't know if I'm comfortable taking that, you know, if, when we get to the picks, taking that number. But this is a game that the line should take care of, in, in my opinion. Then, you're, then pretty you know easy. what? Then you're scared because if you want to be a big oh, boy, you act no, like a scared. big boy. I'm not scared. I just I, the, the, TJ, you I'm should slap you, him I, in the mouth. <laughs> let's say it's 34, you know, <laughs> 20, and the Panthers get a last second, you it know, touchdown. Happen. Oh, you were wrong. It the doesn't Panthers happen. covered. This is right? when like, this is when Aaron Glenn grabs everybody by the face mask and say, "Hey." You want to get a chance at the first string? Don't let them score. <laughs> okay, this isn't remember the Titans. All right. Don't let yeah, them score. This, the you know what? They don't Jesus. gain another yard. Yeah, <laughs> for, you'll be forever on the special teams. I just you look at Carolina. There's just really nothing impressive about their offense and Bryce Young. I mean, I know it, it's they're trying to make it as simple as possible for him. Um, good defenses, you find a way to shut that down, right? The couple things that he's good at, which right now kind of seem to be. The RPO, knowing when to hand it off, knowing when to find an opening over the middle of the field. Uh, those are the kind of things that he's good at. And that's what a lot of young quarterbacks are good at now because that's most of the college systems these days. Hey, Bryce Young, here's Bugs. Bugs, Bryce Young. There you go. Go, Yeah, go. Hey, and they, they should have a party on the defensive line. You force them into third longs and second longs and you get a two-score lead. Fellas, uh, let's I meet mean, the you quarterback. Should, you should absolutely have a field party against that offensive line.
Hey, question. You think Bryce Young can get on the toilet by himself, or does he need help? Okay. You know what? That, there's a flag right there. He's got a squatty potty, you think? <laughs> right? Yeah. Wow. I'm just saying. A little step he stool. looks so much. Dude, he so, makes Kyler Murray looks like George Miras hot. This is right. unbelievable. So, Eastern Michigan football. <laughs> no, no. We can get right back into it. So, TJ, should they still be called the Hurons? 2 4 8. Now, let, let's. Oh, my. I want to ask that's, about that's my pay grade. <laughs> uh, that, no, it's not. You run the school. Who are we kidding? Just J Mo, Dan Campbell, I think, has been sending some interesting messaging. I just what are the expectations? Can you guide people for this weekend? Like, what should their expect? I mean, is he gonna play? Uh, if th- he does, like what are we- What are you expecting? If he does, I honestly expect at least this week to go a lot like we saw last week. And I don't want to try to disappoint people, but you're not just going to come in week five in an offense that's rolling and you got some guys that are reliable and you can count on uh, that are making plays, right? Josh Reynolds and Montgomery, you're not in Laporta. You're not going to take plays away from those guys just because you have somebody else. So I would expect it to be, look, if he does play, I'd probably be shocked if it's more than 15 plays, 18 uh, you, you plays. You don't think that he can get some of the St. Brown? Because if he's not playing... Somebody's got to be in there. Yeah, just different, different type of player. I mean, different type of player. Look, I, I, if I were Ben Johnson early in every game, I would call a quick screen or a jet sweep or something. Get the ball into Nine's hands as fast as you can and just let him run because now the rest of the game, the defense got to think about it. Mm. They got to, they got to count for him wherever he's at on the field. Mm. But knowing Dan Campbell, right here, he that's why the, you're on the sideline. But knowing Dan, right, right? But knowing Dan Campbell, he is the guy. He's going to make you earn it. He's not going to let you come back and just, hey, we're going to make you the focal point, right? There'd be something different if, hey, the last six games of last year, Jamie was catching nine balls a game and 150 yards and touch, right? That that's a different playmaker coming back. But you got to earn the trust. You got to no, go out there. Kidding. You, you got to run block, right? I guarantee. I can almost. <laughs> I can guarantee you, Rico. The first play Jameson's in, whether oh it's God, this week or next yelling. week. It's going to be a run play, and they want to see him block because that's the focal point of this offense. Honestly, if you want to be rewarded, you got to do the dirty work, and they're going to make sure DJ, you know he's able to do that. Dan Campbell looks like the, just the disgruntled parent who just knows you're going to screw up. <laughs> if I give you enough rope, you'll screw up. <laughs> make me proud, no, son. Hey, you got to do your chores, well, look man. At the comments. Jamo's got some catching Look at the comments he made. I mean, he said it. Like, if if we're going to play him, we have to be able to trust him. Exactly. He just yeah. needs to learn to be in the right spots. Like. It, it's yeah. amazing is if you if you follow the team, you cover the team, you know anything, you know that this hasn't gone perfectly, whether it's the off the field or the on the field. The demonstrative stuff or the social media stuff or just on, on the field not doing all the right stuff. So it's like I've said from the beginning, TJ, when it, when he comes back, and now the NFL's given him a, in my mind, a rightful reprieve, Yeah, he's no better than their fifth wide receiver. Earn your way. Yeah, to start. Figure and- it out. And I would say just real quick before we go to break, I you know just talking to some people and being down at Park, they were extremely excited with him coming back in the shape that he was in and the health that he was in. So hopefully some of those, you can call it maybe immature issues that popped up over the last year and a half. Hopefully those are behind him. Uh, it sounds like when he got back into the building this week, a lot of people were like, "Oh hell yeah!" Like he's ready to go. He took care of himself. He looks really good. Uh, attitude is there. So that's something for him. I know it can go a long way because there's just, you know, there's been a few issues the last couple of years, and hopefully those are behind. That's every every Monday when I walk in the building, it's the same thing. I know the vibe. <laughs> Who's that directed at? You know what? <laughs> oh, hell yeah, he's back. 